Today we're going to be taking a look at what you can still mine with an RX 562 gig card. I've been running RX 562 gig card since around 2017 on various algos and I'm still running them to this day. And so about a year ago I created a video talking about what you could actually mine with it, uh, kind of what I was mining with it, which for the longest time I've had these things pretty much on Vertcoin ever since they switched to their latest Elgo that has the fixed 1.9 gig of VRAM requirement. And so the nice thing with that was you can run Vertcoin on any 2 gig card. The Polaris line of cards were super good at Vertcoin, especially if you BIOS mod them. But what I decided to do is take a couple of those RX 560s, throw them in a machine running in Hive OS, install Rainbow Miner, run the full benchmarking, and see what coins it actually detects as mineable, and kind of see where our current profitability on those are. So as I mentioned, I did do a video last year, uh, actually I believe it's around August of last year, covering the profitability at that time with the RX 562 gig cards. And this profitability was for eight cards total, but here we can see it was Ethereum Classic, Ravencoin, Neoxa, Ubik, uh, Vertcoin, Quirk. What you're going to notice is all of those are pretty much FHash algos, uh, with Vertcoin kind of being the exception there, which is works similar to a FHash algo. Now, if we hop on over to Rainbow Mire, you can see I am actually mining away. Right now I'm pulling 65 watts total. This is across both cards. And we're actually mining a CPU mineable coin at this time. And this was something that I didn't really look at back then because I was really looking at GPU mineable coins. And I kind of made a little bit of a shift there where with Rainbow Miner, it will benchmark essentially every possible algo it can within each miner for the hardware that you have. And so the beauty of that is there's a chance that, especially on some of these uh, lower power carts, that they can actually be somewhat efficient on CPU mineable coins. And that's the case with the RX 560 2 gig. You can see we are running two 2 gig cards. And uh, they're running fairly cool, 19% fan. Uh, no big deal there. And the power draw on this algo is currently at around 35 watts. Now if we jump on over to the benchmarks, and let's filter this on successful benchmarks, and we'll go ahead and sort this by algorithm. And you're gonna, I'm going to walk through all the algos that it supports, which is actually uh, pleasantly surprising. I didn't think it was going to be this many, but it is. So starting off, we've got Crypto Knight Fast 2, which clocked at 1.6 kilohash per second. Keep in mind, this is two cards. So if you're only one, running one card, all these hash rates would be half of that. And same thing with the power. The power would be half of that. Uh, when it benchmarks, it aggregates together the hash rate. Uh, the next one is Haven, just Crypto Knight Heavy XHV, which is Haven. And we got about half a kilohash per second. And I'm pretty good on that one. Crypto Knight R, which this is going to be like Sumo Coin. We got 671 hashes per second. Curve Hash, we got around a mega hash a second. And you can see both miners benchmarked around that same hash rate. Uh, with WildRig actually getting 100% rejected shares. Uh, next up is the ETHash Blake 3 combo. And if you notice here, with BZ Miner, we were only getting 74 kilohash. This was really a, more of a minor crash, not really working properly. But with SRB Miner, we did get the full 16.5 mega hash. So that was good. Uh, the other nice thing is that they also benchmark the uh, dual mining coins. So if you want to dual or triple mine coins, it will benchmark those for you. So what we see here is ETHash B3 plus SHA-512 256D, which I believe is Radiant. So it benchmarked both of those together. And here we can see 142 kilohash and 190 megahash. Once again, this was on BZ Miner, which wasn't really working well for FHash B3, but it was able to benchmark the dual mining. Now moving on to Kapow, here we can see we're averaging around nine. With Team Redmire, we actually got upwards of 
uh, almost 12, which is really good in comparison to the other miners. Uh, another thing this does is this kind of gives you an idea, a uh, quick glance of what the better miners may be for a specific Elgo for a specific card. And moving down, we've got Meme Hash, 9.5 mega hash a second. Uh, the Mike Elgo, which is what it's currently mining, uh, at 635 hashes per second. Nexapal also did successfully benchmark on these cards at 261 kilohashes per second. Um, PHI also benchmarked at 13. ProgPal, once again, is around that 90 mark, or 9 mark rather. Uh, SHA-256 CSM, around 660 mega hash. Uh, DT, which I believe is Nova, is around 614 mega hash. Sky Doge was 5.5. Take Two, which this is Ghost Rider. So this is things like Raptorium, Bittorium, those types of coins, uh, just under a kilo hash. Vert Hash, one of my favorite coins to mine with these cards. Here you can see that Team Red Miner does have some optimizations for that, so we were able to achieve six, 430 kilo hashes per second. But what's interesting about this is Vert Hash, which is a generic miner, was able to achieve 473. However, we did get 11% rejected shares. So in these scenarios, I tend to like, use, like to use Team Red Miner, if possible. <clears throat> uh, moving on to Wild Rig. So we had X16R, which is the original Raven coin algo. We got 8.3 mega hash. X16RT, we got 9.7. Uh, revision 2 of X16R, we got 7. X21S, which is the Pigeon coin algo. We got 5.3 to mega hash per second. You can mine pigeon coin with these. Uh, they're not the greatest at it, just mainly because Wild Rig isn't the greatest at uh, mining those coins. I prefer T Rex over Wild Rig when it comes to X21S Elgo. Uh, the other one is X25X, and we got 723 kilohash per second on that. Zevin is 2.25. And YesCrypt R8, which is also a CPU mineable coin, we got 2.4 kilohash per second. And we can take this information, and what can we do with this? Well, we can actually see what coins correspond with those algos. We do that in a number of ways. We can either, you know, go to what to mine, go to mining pool stats, figure those out, or one of the nice things with Rainbow Miner is we can actually go to the best pools option here. If you notice, it tells us all of the coins. So if we were looking for a specific algorithm, let's say we were just looking at, uh, let's do take two as an example because there's many coins on that. Here we can see RTC is the current um, top pool, but if we go to all pools and give that a minute to load because it's actually loading the aggregate amount of pretty much everything. So if we do take two, here we can see these are these are all the coins on take two. So if we sort this A to Z, we got ARGY, we've got BBC, we've got BTRM, we've got FSC, we've got GPRX, JGC, LTRM, MACU, MTBC, RTC, RTM of course, uh, SkyT, Vars, Yerb, and so if you're unsure of all the various Ghost Rider coins, it's a quick way to see that. So once you find an algo you like, you can come over here and you can actually see all the coins that you would be able to mine with that card to kind of take advantage of that. So uh, once again, if we do Kapow, and we do the two gig variant. What this is gonna do is this is gonna say, only show me coins that I can mine with a two gig card based on that memory requirement. And here we can see we have a bunch of coins. So we've got CCC, which I believe is Ceiling Cat Coin. We've got Clore. We've got GPM, which is Game Pass Network. We got Meow Coin. We've got Neoxa. We've got the Paprika Coin. Uh, we have PRCO. I'm not sure what that one is off the top of my head. We've got Satox. 
and we have NOR AI. So those are all coins, all Kapow coins that we can mine with the specific card. Now obviously there are other Kapow coins, uh, but this will give us the list that is specific to this card or that this card is capable of mining rather. So what I like to do is I like to go to the miner section and in here you can actually sort Satoshis per watt. So this is going to give you that optimal how many Satoshis am I going to make per watt consumed. And so I've got this sorted high to low meaning I'm making the most Satoshis per watt and here you can see it's the Mike Algo followed by take two. So obviously these are the top two that you would be want to be mining with the card. Now this is a near real time chart so this will update as it pulls more information from all the, its profitability sources. It's looking at network difficulty, it's looking at things like what to mine, it's looking at Zerg pool, it's looking at Z pool, it's looking at mining dodge pro hashing, it's looking at all these various sources to assemble this information along with the hash rate and power consumptions that your cards have reported. And so what we can see is we've got Mike Take Two, we've got Crypto Knight R, we've got Vert Hash, then we've got Haven. So these are kind of those top coins that we would be looking at. Um, probably not a bad idea to do Ghost Rider on this card and just let it auto switch on something like Zerg Pool or Z Pool pay you out in whatever coin you want. Even if you want Monero, you can point this thing to like C3 pool or Monero Ocean. Let it mine the Ghost Rider coins and pay you out in Monero. Or with Zerg pool, you can pay out in any coin supported by Zerg pool. Same thing with Z pool. And this is just a high level showing of all the various coins that you can mine with your RX 562 gig cards. And more importantly, kind of showing you how you can leverage Rainbow Miner's benchmarking functionality to actually see all of that information visually and identify some coins that you may not know about but do have exchange values, just aren't listed on any of the mining calculators.